Pluto is one of the farthest objects in our galaxy orbiting around the sun. With an irregular orbit, Pluto sometimes orbits the sun closer than Neptune. Once considered a planet, Pluto's distance from the sun varies between 30 and 49 astronomical units. Pluto takes 248 years to rotate around the sun. Pluto's transit through the astrological ground signs has marked important historical events within the last 300 years. Pluto was in Taurus from 1852 to 1883. In Virgo from 1956 to 1971 and currently is in Capricorn from 2008 to 2024. Pluto's role in mythology and astrology coincide. Pluto, god of the underworld in Greek mythology, is the archetype of the monotheistic Satan, Lucifer, or the personification of evil. These archetypes leave out the fact that Pluto had equals in Greek mythology, who were Zeus and Neptune. Pluto's relationship with the underworld closely describes the system of racial slavery. There were 4 million slaves in 1860, worth $3.5 billion in America. Many people supported the unpopular cause of abolitionism in antebellum America. People such as Frederick Douglass wrote and spoke out against slavery and William Lloyd Garrison, publisher of The Liberator. The plantation system in the United States reached its greatest development before the Civil War. By 1860, plantations reached from Virginia to Texas. On some of these, tobacco was produced. On others, sugar was grown. On others, Cotton was the main crop. Whatever the crop, the system of producing was similar. Slaves in the South not only gave up their labor, they also surrendered their identity. I want you to tell me how you got your name. I got my name from Prison Jeff Davis. Prison Southern Confederate. On my grandfather and my father. I brought them to Richmond, Virginia. My grandfather was a blacksmith. My father was a young kid. Where you going? On April 12, 1861, Americans began to leave their homes to fight a civil war. Slavery was a central issue. One of the first modern conflicts, the Civil War would claim over 700,000 lives. After some early defeats, Northern armies eventually would crush the Confederate army. In the course of the war, President Lincoln emancipated Southern slaves. And with the brilliant generalship of Ulysses S. Grant and William Tecumseh Sherman, the war ended on April 9th, 1865 with Lee's surrender at the Appomattox Courthouse. After four years of war, the North emerged victorious, but one week later, the South began to win the peace. John Wilkes Booth murdered Abraham Lincoln on April 16, 1865. Violence took to the streets after the war with racial conflict from New Orleans to Memphis. The Freedmen's Bureau and the U.S. Army guaranteed physical and political protection for the former slaves. They provided functional interracial courts and juries. However, a bitter political battle between radical Republicans and Confederate Democrats was waged. A president was almost impeached. 
The nation was divided with no room for reconciliation or redemption. The road to reconstruction would be rocky. The Ku Klux Klan engaged in a reign of terror that would emancipate former Confederates and expel Northern troops. They intimidated, beat, and killed former slaves and their allies. Freedmen would eventually be returned to second-class citizenship through a system of sharecropping and racial segregation, which would be in place for almost a century. This period would be called the Jim Crow Era. Segregation was the law of the land in the southern states in the beginning of the 20th century. Cultural and legal segregation kept the races apart. Segregation was present in all aspects of southern public life. The Brown v. Board decision set in motion a great movement and produced a great leader. I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. This movement had a great ally in President John F. Kennedy. On this question of equality of opportunity for all Americans, whether it's in the field of civil rights, better minimum wages, better housing, better working conditions, jobs, I stand for these things. The Nation of Islam rose as a militant alternative to the civil rights movement. We are black people who are Muslims because we believe in the religion of Islam and we practice the principles of the religion of Islam, and the principles of the religion of Islam is what has cleaned us up, what has reformed us, what has rehabilitated us, and what has given us the incentive to stand on our own feet and solve our problems ourselves, instead of depending upon white people to solve them for us. The Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act are laws that reverse generations of separate but equal. However, tragedy would strike this great movement. I have some very sad news for all of you, and I think uh, sad news for all of our fellow citizens and people who love peace all over the world. And that is that Martin Luther King was shot and was killed tonight in Memphis. The murders of John F. Kennedy, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and Robert Kennedy ripped the nation apart. After the murder of Martin Luther King, black communities nationwide revolted. Citizens battled with police officers. The promise of the civil rights movement was in doubt. We all know that the roots of injustice run deep. But violence cannot redress a solitary wrong or remedy a single unfairness. It was a creed written into the founding documents that declared the destiny of the nation. Yes, we can. It was whispered by slaves and abolitionists as they blazed the trail toward freedom. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Barack Obama arose from being an Illinois state senator to running for becoming the first African-American president of the United States in 12 years. Engaging in a whirlwind campaign that went from coast to coast, Barack Obama met with voters, listened to them, organized with them, and gave stirring speeches about hope, change, and the future. He would eventually secure his party's nomination, and in November of 2008, Barack Obama won a landslide victory in the presidential election. 
My fellow citizens, I stand here today humbled by the task before us, grateful for the trust you have bestowed, mindful of the sacrifices borne by our ancestors. With the hopes and dreams of a nation, this new young president would be tested in many ways. The BP oil spill polluted much of the Gulf of Mexico in April of 2009. It would become a terrible environmental disaster. President Obama's major political opposition came from a group of disgruntled Republicans who called themselves the Tea Party. Resisting regulation and a reduction of government were the aims of the Tea Party who opposed the president on every front. Their opposition sometimes became vitriolic and bordered on the offensive. Over and over and over again, who has a deep-seated hatred for white people or the white culture, I don't know what it is. I'm saying he has a problem. He has a, this guy is, I believe, a racist. I'm grateful for your hospitality and the hospitality of the people of Egypt. And I'm also proud to carry with me the goodwill of the American people and a greeting of peace from Muslim communities in my country. Assalamu alaikum. With rebels in Libya, the U.S. was able to depose a strong man, Muammar el Gaddafi. And with a secret operation, American forces captured and killed one of terrorists, Osama bin Laden. And in the midst of it all, American troops were being withdrawn from Iraq after a long war. President Obama is still a very young president and we still have another decade at least to witness how he and we handle the Pluto effect. <laughs>